Hi, this is Katie Beto, Head of Faculty Services at the O'Quinn Law Library. This video will give you step-by-step -step instructions for setting up and running your Zoom meetings for Law Center courses. Zoom is a cloud-based video conferencing service that you can use to virtually meet with others, either by video or audio only, or both, all while conducting live chats, and it lets you record those sessions to view later. A Zoom meeting refers to a video conferencing meeting that's hosted by Zoom. You can join these meetings via webcam or phone. A Zoom meeting is an ideal format for course meetings in real time. To begin, you will need to activate your Zoom account. All of the teaching faculty for the spring 2020 semester should have received a Zoom account invitation. This email will come from Zoom itself. On this screen, you can see what my activation email looked like. All you need to do is click on activate your Zoom account. When you activate your account, you will set up an account with your email address and a password. Once you've done that, you are ready to log in to zoom.us to begin. Once you've reached zoom.us, click on sign in. Then you'll use your email address and the password you set up to log in. Now you are in your Zoom profile. You can change your picture here and see your account information. The only thing you need to check here is that your time zone is correct because that is what will create the default time setting for your Zoom meeting. After that, it's time to set up your meeting. Just click over below profile where it says meetings. Then you're going to schedule a new meeting. This is the page where most of our setup will take place. Under Topic, put in your class course title. You may add a description if you like, but that is optional. Next, we're going to set up the date and time for our class. Over in date, you're going to set up your first class meeting for the week of March 23rd. I have a one hour and 15 minute class that meets Mondays and Wednesdays at 1 o'clock p.m. So our, my first class will be Monday, March 23rd at 1 o'clock p.m. And the duration will be one hour and 15 minutes. My time zone is fine here. Next, you're going to click on Recurring Meeting because you want your class to meet more than once. So I will click on Recurring Meeting, change the recurrence to Weekly, repeat every one week, and my class occurs on Mondays and Wednesdays. I will set the end date for the end of the Law Center academic calendar for the spring semester, which is Friday, April 24th right now. With this, I will be set up to have my class meet until the end of the semester. Next, you can set a meeting password if you like. It is not required, and if students do not have the password, they will not be able to attend the class and may miss it. But if you are concerned about anyone with a link having access to your course, you may go ahead and send up a password and distribute it to your students. Under video, I'm going to set host and participant both to on. And for audio, I am going to choose both telephone and computer audio. Under meeting options, choose enable join before host and record the meeting automatically. Enable join before host allows students to enter the virtual classroom even if the professor has not yet arrived. Record the meeting automatically will ensure that the class session is recorded and a recording of the class can be sent to students for review or to students who missed the session. After opting to record the meeting automatically, you can choose to have it recorded onto your local computer or in the cloud space provided by Zoom. Either option is okay, but recording to the cloud will save space on your computer. I'm going to choose to record in the cloud. Finally, you can set up alternative hosts. If you are the only professor teaching the course, you may leave the field blank. If you are co-teaching a course with another professor, include their email, may, email here so either of you may host the course meeting. 
Finally, click Save. After clicking Save, I can see the details of my course meeting. You can see here it will begin March 23rd and meet every Monday and Wednesday through the end of April. I can add this to my calendar if I want a reminder. My meeting ID is here, and you can see the password I've set up. Most important here is the Join URL. That is the link that your students are going to use in order to join the class. The easiest way to distribute this to your students is to click on Copy the Invitation. Clicking on the Copy Meeting Invitation link will give you the sample text that you can send out to your students. You can see here there is the name of the class, the time and dates that it will meet, the meeting URL, the link the students will use to access the meeting, the meeting ID, the password, and the call-in number. Note that this URL will be the same for each of your class meetings, and you do not need to create a new one for each class. The same one will be used throughout. I can click Copy Meeting Invitation, and this will put this text on my clipboard. I am now ready to send an email to my class. I can open a new email, click Command V on a Mac or Control V on a PC, to paste this information. Next, I can add a, add a subject. And send it to my students. Your course setup is now complete and you are ready for your first class meeting. When it's time for your class to meet, go to zoom.us and log in. Now I can go to Meetings, find the meeting I am looking for for the appropriate date, and click Start. This Open dialog will appear, and you will click OpenZoom.us and allow the application to open. You are now in your meeting. Go ahead and click on Join with Computer Audio. And just like that, we are in our meeting. This is what it looks like when you're in your actual Zoom meeting. You will see the face on the video of whoever is currently speaking. You have many options at the bottom of your screen, including mute to mute your audio, stop your video, and over here you can see the participants in the class, everyone who's currently attending the class, the chat room where students can type messages, to let you know if they're having problems, or you can post links that your students may want to view. Another thing you can do is share your screen. When you click on Share Screen, you will see a number of options. First, you can share your desktop screen, which will show everything that is currently on your desktop. So if you have any programs or windows open that you don't want students to see, I recommend closing those first. If you want to share a PowerPoint presentation, make sure that PowerPoint presentation is already open or it will not appear. If you're showing video clips, like from YouTube or another source, make sure you have on Share Computer Sound and Optimize Screen Share for Video Clip. I'm going to try sharing my PowerPoint presentation in the meeting right now. Now my students can see the PowerPoint slides I have open. Class, can you see my PowerPoint presentation? Yes. All right. I can click through my PowerPoint presentation as I would normally. When I'm done sharing, all I have to do is click Stop Share. That is all it takes to conduct your Zoom meeting. Uh, remember that when someone is speaking, they will pop up in front, and you can change from Gallery View where you can see everyone, to speaker view, where you just see the person who is speaking. When your class is finished, simply click on Leave Meeting. Once class has ended, you can access a recording of the meeting. Just sign back into your account, and click on recordings. 
Here I can see my recordings from previous classes. My the meeting I just ended was recorded in the cloud and that takes a little bit of time to process. If you record it to your local disk, it will be ready immediately. Once it is ready, you can share the recording of the class with your students who might have missed it or who may want to view it again for review. Simply click on the share button. You want to click on publicly for sharing this recording. You may allow users to download it. And if you want, you can set up a password for it. But that is optional. Just like before, I can copy this information to the clipboard and send it out in an email to my students. And once again, just paste the information there. I can send this to my whole class and they will be able to view the recording of the class on demand. You may do this for each class if you want or for none at all. It is up to you. That is all it takes to conduct your Zoom meeting and access the recordings afterwards. Remember, we here at the Law Library, along with the IT department, are here to help you during this transition to online teaching. Please contact the Law Library for one-on-one -on -one support or test meetings, and we will make sure you are up and running and ready to go. We are all in this together, and we want to make you as successful as possible. Thank you for watching.